everyone welcome back to my channel we are back today to continue with our Hannah Carlson mystical themed limited palette color along and I think this might be part 10 of the series I am not absolutely positive but I'm pretty sure I'm correct in that and today we are going to discuss creating balance on your coloring page. We are going to work on the decorative areas on each one of these bottles. I don't know how far we'll get in this video because I don't want the video to go too long, but I am going to discuss how to create balance in your page by spreading the color across your page, especially when working with a limited color palette and only a few pencils. This is something that I think every colorist should understand because this is something that you could apply to any coloring page that you're working on or any project that you are working on no matter what it is or what the theme is. So if you enjoy videos like this and you would like to continue to see tutorials such as these, then please make sure you subscribe to my channel and also turn on your bell notifications also please do give this video a thumbs up because it really helps my channel out a lot and I really appreciate it so let's go ahead and get into this video okay so I pulled out the color wheel because I kind of want you all to understand a little bit of how and why I'm um, doing this and choosing my colors of course you know like I said I'm working with a limited color palette so I don't necessarily have all the colors on my color wheel in my color palette but when you're trying to create balance on a page, you want to make sure you're pulling one color from one side of the page into the other side of the page. So that way when the naked eye is looking at the page, it looks like it has balance. So if I take some of the colors that I used over here in this bottle and I pull them into over here to this bottle and I color so use some of this color over here for the decorative part on this bottle it's going to create contrast and if I look here you can see a lot of these colors here in my um, you know in these colors or maybe more so here kind of in between these two colors you could see a lot of that in this bottle and in the um, vapors escaping the bottle so I don't want to go directly across and I don't have any green in my color palette so I'm gonna do the next best thing and I'm kinda kind of go like this not directly across to where we have a huge huge contrast but I'm going to stay kind of in this area and kind of go this way so that it is still gonna stand out but it's not gonna be like pow in your face so we are going to take the colors that are over here in this bottle. So I pulled out the colors that I used over here to make this bottle with the reflective glass. And so I have Carmine Red PC 926, and then Mahogany Red PC 1029, and then Spanish Orange, which is PC 1003 and then this really bright yellow which is canary yellow and it is PC 916 and then I have my white that I always add to every palette which is PC PC 938 I think we all probably a lot of us know that number by heart now but I'm going to start over here on this one and I really don't know yet what I'm going to do, but I'm going to start coloring some of this in and see where we go with this. So I think I'm going to do probably this part of the bottle right here and I am going to start that with my Spanish orange and I am just going to come in here and I'm just going to shade in a little bit of this here but I'm just trying to, again, bring the colors from the other side of the page onto this side of the page. And these colors are pretty contrasting from one another. So I'm just kind of doing the outside because I really want it to um, 
really stand out. So I want to be able to uh, create a highlight area. And of course, this isn't my darkest color. So I'm only using light pressure. And then I am going to, I think we're going to come in with the mahogany red. I don't know, maybe that's going a little bit too much. Let's go ahead and use our canary yellow. Because I don't know if that red is going to take us too far into the same type of shade to where it takes us away from creating that contrasting look but I do need a color to be able to line this here. So we'll probably use that for that, to be able to line everything and, yeah, I think I like that. Those colors look really pretty together. Let me go ahead and darken this up. And I'm gonna use very light pressure here just to add a little bit of shadow because this is a pretty pigmented color. That is a very pretty color. But I think I'm gonna need a little bit more of the yellow because this is bringing in probably too much red. I just really want it to look like it is shadowing it. So I don't want too much. So I'm gonna come back now with my Spanish orange and I'm just gonna kind of pull that out because I want this orange in there. To, I, I want to take the orange and just kind of really mix it in with the mahogany red to kind of create another color. Because I don't know if a lot of you know this, but when you mix your uh, Prisma colors together a certain way, like when you mix one color with another, you can very easily create other colors. And that's kind of what I'm trying to do here. But I just need a little bit more of this pigment. And I'm wondering, I have not used my orange yet. I'm going to pull out my orange and I'm going to add a little bit of this in here to make it even more con. Oh, I like that. I have not used this color yet in my palette. Oh, and this works really well. Okay, so I think that this orange is really adding a lot of the dimension that I wanted to add here. And I'm probably going to pull a lot of it through with a little bit more yellow and then some of my white. I'm just shading a little bit more here because I really want this these areas to stand out. And of course I'll come back and I'll pull all of that through with the Spanish orange. Make sure like um, you like we learned in the last video, make sure that you leave the white of that paper, like here in the center where I'm leaving the white, make sure that you don't come too far into the center because we're gonna pull that out with the white pencil. Again, like what I showed you in that last video, how to use the natural white of the paper to create a reflective area like we did with the glass. 
that is something that you will always be able to use on any page that you're working on. Now I'm coming over with my canary yellow, but I'm still not covering a very little bit of white in the center. And as always, if I get quiet, it's because I'm just trying to concentrate. So when we come in with our white, PC938, it's just going to kind of smooth all of that out. And in this case, I do kind of want it to pull the wax. So I'm actually not just going, if I didn't want it to pull the wax, then I would just do right in the center where it's white. But in this case, I'm not trying to make the reflective area like a huge area like I did when I did when we did the glass bottle together. So I'm I'm trying to kind of pull that color through. So I am going to go over the whole thing. So I'm just coming back with my mahogany red, which is my darkest color. And I'm just trying to add a little bit more shadowing in here because I just went over it with the white so it just kind of took some of that away and anytime you go over something with your white and it lightens it up you can always go back and retouch it up and add more of the dark because with your Prismacolors they always go right back over again just trying to get rid of the white of the paper down here And you can go over this as many times as you need to to get the look that you're going for. And sometimes it takes a little while just to make it look like you've got that, uh, that dimension going on. Now you can see how I just kind of took the colors that I used over here on this side when I did this glass bottle and I'm pulling them into the opposite side of the page and you could see how it just added so much balance to the page. Now I'm just coming in with my uh, canary yellow and I'm kind of smoothing all of this out so that I don't have any harsh edges and making it look more yellow than red to where it still has the shadowing so that it does have some dimension. But I love how this worked out because it just, it gives the page so much balance. And I don't know if you could see that. Hopefully you could see that on camera. I think I'm pretty close. But you could see that it looks almost the same as this bottle and we just pulled it and brought it over here. And so now the page just kind of looks even. And so let's go ahead and add a little bit more of this color over here because I really kind of like that. So maybe we'll do it in these little um, circular things hanging off the uh, cup here. And then maybe we'll do it in these as well. I don't know though because we've got some circles down here. I'm just trying to um, kind of think out loud and I don't know, I might want to bring in some of my gel pens or use a little bit of glitter just to give it a little bit of bling bling. But let's go ahead and come in down here first. And I definitely want to do these here. These little things that are hanging here that look kind of like gemstones or something, I definitely want to use glitter on those because they just look like something that would be hanging that would be like a bead or something and they're really pretty so I just kind of really want to add some glitter there I just don't know what color yet so let's go ahead and come in here and shade these in with our yellow and again leave the white in the centers because we want that white for that reflective area of each one of these so that they really stand out. 
And we're gonna come back in with our Spanish orange like we did before. Let me scoot you guys over just a little bit. I think you're much, much more in frame now. There we go. So we're gonna come in here with our Spanish orange and we are just going to add a little bit of that. I may even add these colors here in the center of this as well, and then possibly bring the pinks over to the other side, but we'll see what happens when I get there. I'm trying to do this part just a little bit faster and hopefully y'all can see exactly what I'm doing. I feel like this is laying closer to the, the ground here, so I feel like this would have a lot more shadowing down here where it's on the ground and then not as much up here. Just a little hint while well, you guys are coloring that. And don't think that y'all have to follow the same color scheme that I'm following. I saw somebody post a picture in the Facebook group and they did the bottle that I did in um, the goldy looking colors with the oranges and the yellows. They did it in purple and it's gorgeous. Okay, so let's come in with our orange now. We're gonna add a little bit of that. I hadn't even used this orange yet, but as you can see, it was probably an unneeded color in my palette because if you looked at this bottle, I kind of created orange with the colors I already had. So I really did not need that. You can mix your Prisma colors together to create other colors, especially when using a limited palette. Don't always think that you need 150 pencils sitting in front of you and you need to have the biggest of every single set that you purchase because you really don't you can create other colors with what you have. And that's what I had to do for a long time because I started out with, I think it was the 36 set, and I used that one for three years before I ever got 150 set. Of course, now I've got 250 sets. And sometimes it can be overwhelming. And I really think that people are that are just starting and coming to the coloring community and picking up this new hobby, they don't need you, you don't really have a need for the 150 set of pencils right away. And you can get a smaller set of Prismas for a fairly decent price, especially on Amazon. Okay, so down here I think that we would have a little bit more shadow because it's laying on the ground, like I said earlier. So I need to pull some of that color out because I don't want too much of that brownish red in there. I just am basically using it just for shadowing. And don't ever leave harsh lines when you're coloring. The wax in these pencils mixes together really nicely, especially when you're using colors of these shades. But when you're using yellows and oranges or anything that has yellow in it, like I said in my last video, you need to be careful about how much you actually lay down because they do tend to get shinier and they tend to me anyway feel like they are a tad bit waxier. And so you just kind of want to go light and do some, you know, like layers at a time. So let's add a little bit more of our canary yellow to kind of brighten it up. And then I think I'm going to come in with my white in the areas where I just left the white of the paper. But I wanted to do this one and at least show you how I create balance in my page by pulling color from one side to the other and at least do one part of it so that I could get a um, 
a video up for y'all today. But I don't know how long it's going to end up being, so we'll see. And now I'm just going over this with the white. I don't want to do it like, um, you know, setting it to music and stuff because I've had so many of you say that you enjoy listening to me do these videos and explain absolutely everything I'm doing in detail. So I'm trying to just keep it that way. Now see, I added a lot more of the mahogany red um, up in the top part. And a lot less down here. Maybe I'll come back and add a little bit more, but I think the variation in color is nice. But I do think that I need a little bit more just for, um, just to make it stand out a little bit more. So I'm just going to do this. I'm using extremely light pressure, but see the shadow I just added on there? And all that does is just create a little bit more dimension. So I'm using very light pressure and I'm just doing this at the very ends. But I think you can see on camera the difference that makes. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to do a little bit more because, like I said earlier, this part is just um, is laying on the ground so there would be more shadow here. So we want to make it look like that. So I'm going to come over that with a little bit more orange and kind of pull that out because it would naturally be darker here. And then I'm going to come back with my white and I am just going to blend those out just a little bit more. And I think I like the way that looks. It's pretty. So I'm wondering, I think maybe the top rim of the bottle should maybe be this color as well. So let's go ahead and do this part. And I'm thinking that we need like a little bit of shadow like right in here. So I'm going to come all the way to the end with my yellow. And I'm going to stop right in here and not color that. And again, I'm going to leave the white of the paper right here. And I'm coming back with my Spanish orange. And I'm only adding it right here. And then I'm going to come back here and do the same thing on the other side. I'm thinking this area here is going to be darker because, again, it's laying on the ground. So not as much light would be getting down in there. So we're going to come back with our mahogany red. And we are going to kind of pull that out and really create a shadow right here. And then we're going to do the same thing up here. And I'm going to come in with my orange. And I'm going to pull that out a little bit. Well, that made a big difference. I'm going to come back in here and make this a little bit darker. And again on the same side over here. Now I'm going to come in with my yellow and I'm going to kind of blend this out a little bit. And 
in the areas where you find that you can't get the wax to spread. If you originally went one direction, like straight up and down, you would just come back and you would go like in the areas where you went straight up and down, you would come back and you would go in with like a circular motion and that will help you to spread the wax out a little bit more. So I think I'm gonna try to line this cause I still wanna keep that white there. So I think I'm gonna try to line this with the Spanish orange to just still kind of add some of that color in there. Now I'm gonna come back over with my white. And so this is going to stay white here. And then I'm gonna come over this and kind of blend it all out. And this will really help you blend your colors out when you're using colors like oranges and reds or anything that has some kind of yellow in it. And see, it looks much better. I got my pencils rolling all over the place. So let me see. I think I need to line it a little bit more. I'm going to get my uh, pencil sharpener and give me a really nice sharp lid. This is my Dole 133. It is my favorite. If you didn't already see that video, I'll make sure that I have linked that uh, video linked up there in the right hand corner in the cards. And I'm going to just add, it makes such a huge difference when you've got a uh, nice sharp lead on your pencils. I think for video's sake, we'll probably only be able to fit one into uh, this segment of the videos and then we'll finish it and show you how I bring the colors and create more balance in the next video on the other bottles but I really like how this looks And I love how it looks with the white there. I think it looks really um, reflective. So I took a little time off camera to think about how I'm going to do this. And I think that we're going to go ahead and do this line in here with the same color. I'm looking at this and sometimes I need to take a picture with my camera to see how it looks. But it's looking really nice and I love how it's looking so gold. Like I thought that I was going to have to, I was actually going to switch my color palette. I don't know if some of you watched the last video where I talked about that. And I wanted to swap out one of my colors because I really wanted the golden raw because that's how you usually create gold, like with yellow ochre and golden rod. And I didn't have any of those colors in my palette. I still found a way to make things look or have that same kind of goldy tone, which is really really cool so we are going to come in and we're going to do this line here and I think we're also going to do these little um, hangy circular things up here too so we're going to do those in the same color scheme that we've been doing so we're going to put our yellow in here And then we're going to come in with our Spanish orange. And maybe I'll make this a little bit, maybe I won't add any of the red on these just because I want these to have a different, a little bit of a different look without any of the mahogany red. Maybe. I'm not going to add any orange though. And then the little um, things that are hanging below it, I'm trying to add more of this just to kind of give it a lot more emphasis and make it stand out. And I think I am going to come in with my mahogany red, but I am not going to add any orange. 
so that way I still can well, it makes such a difference with the sharper lead. There we go. Yeah, that's pretty. I hope the camera's close enough and y'all could see exactly what I'm doing. Now here, I'm going to add a little bit more because it's laying on the side and then I'm going to come back in here with my Spanish orange and I'm going to pull that out because that is the only one that is going to look darker just because I want to make sure that shadow is there I mean I was so confused about what I was going to do with all these decorative areas but I think it's coming together very nicely and I think that anytime you are confused and you're not sure where to go on your coloring page, get out your color wheel and look for the contrasting colors. And even if they're not exactly contrasting, like straight across the color wheel from one another, just something that is kind of close to it but still opposite, just not exact opposite. And that will definitely, that will definitely help you to make your page look much more balanced and help you with deciding on your colors. Even if you're using a limited palette and you only have certain colors in your palette, if you don't have the color that is as exactly all the way opposite, then you're probably most likely going to have a color that is close to it or very close to it. Okay, so now I'm just gonna come over. Those are a little bit brighter and I like the way that they look, but I'm just going to pull them through and kind of lighten it up a little bit. And I really like those. And then I think that I think that the little circular circle thingies, yeah, we're going to do this down here too. So let's go ahead and start that. This will only take a second to do these. And again, this area here is going to be darker since it's laying on the side. And we're leaving the white again, just like we did before. And I'm going to come in here where it should be darkest. I'm going to add my mahogany red, probably more so of it here than I did previously. Just because I kind of like that look and I want it to really look separate from one another because I'm going to come in here and add some glitter. And I love how when you lay the uh, Spanish orange over the mahogany, it really changes the color. So I'm doing very light pressure with this one. I'm going to kind of like pull it through a little bit, but I'm using very light pressure and I'm not pulling it through all the way. Then I'm going to come back with my white and I am going to just go over it like that. And I think that I went over it too much, so I'm just going to come back in here and just go over this line with my darkest color. And if you wanted to, you can always come back with a black fine liner um, and go back over the spots that you went over with with too much white. I always do either or, but I find that my darkest color will just give it more dimension. And sometimes the black fine liner lays down too much ink and then it doesn't look good. And then right here where you have the white, if you wanted to um, add more reflective areas in here, you could always come back with your Posca and go over them and kind of just pull them with your finger like this after you lay your Posca down, but it does need to be spread. And I'm not gonna do that just because I like the look of 
just the pencil. Okay, so then for the last part, I'm gonna come in and I'm just going to use my canary yellow and I'm just going to go over some of this. I don't know, maybe I should use the Spanish. You know what, let me use the Spanish orange. And I'm just gonna come in here and shade all of these areas with the Spanish orange. And the reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to come in with my stickles and the color stickles that I'm using is called Starburst and it is not very opaque and so I have found that if I have the color laying under it it will make the stickles look a lot better although this looks really kind of pretty the way that this is just kind of shading in with this color I'm using very light pressure so that I don't lay down too much of this because it does have quite a bit of orange in it. It's kind of a mix of yellow and orange. So if I just do this over all these areas, and it only takes a minute to do this, but it'll take longer to go over everything with all the stickles. That process always takes a little bit longer because you want to be very careful. So I think I have enough of that pigment laying down. Let's go ahead and do one area. This is, I'm using the Starburst stickles. And what you want to do with these is just look at it and watch it. You could see it coming to the tip. And then once it gets to the tip, you don't really need to press a whole lot. You need to wait till it comes to the tip and then just kind of lay it on your page. And the tips are usually pretty good about just laying the glitter down for you. But when you're doing these really thin areas, you need to be more careful. Trying to see if this color is going to look good and stand out enough. I don't think I really have another color that will look better, so I want to stick with the theme. And I don't think I really want all this extra stuff to really stand out a whole lot more. I'm hoping the glitter that I'm laying down is showing up a good amount on the camera. Okay, so now let's come back down to these areas where you have really little small areas. You make sure you just barely dab it. And like there, I just dabbed it, and then I just kind of pulled it through. So I know you guys see me use stickles a lot on flowers, but they work for so many other things. And they really make your pages beautiful. I think that looks really pretty. I hope it's seen on camera, though. And these should be seen a lot more because it's a bigger space. And here I'm just kind of pulling it because especially here, like the stickles are very easily removable and you could just wipe them off with your finger. But I'm working with closer areas where I'm laying the glitter like very close together so I don't want to have to be wiping it off my page. Oh, it's starting to come together really nicely. There is like green glitter in this one mixed in with the yellow and it's just really standing out. And it's easier to see in these larger areas. Now 
Yeah, if you guys don't have stickles, you need to get some. I'll definitely have a uh, link down in the description. I always have links down in the descriptions for anything that you see me using in my videos. But this is now complete for the top of that bottle. And I just wanted you guys to be able to see how it changes. Let me zoom this out here. But look how it changes the whole look of the page when I just took the color from one side and added it to the other side to make the page just look more balanced. So now when I come in over on the other side and I show you in my next video and I continue showing you how to add balance in your coloring page, I am going to pull one of the colors from one of these other bottles into the gold bottle and maybe we'll do that other side. I don't know. I haven't decided exactly where I'm going to go with this and what I'm going to do. I usually put probably more thought into these things than I probably should. <laughs> but I just always want my coloring pages to turn out pretty perfect. I hope you all enjoyed this video on creating balance on your page and we will continue to create balance on the page by bringing the color from one bottle to another across the page. You'll be able to see what I decide to do in my next video following this one. So if y'all enjoyed this video, please make sure that you do subscribe to my channel. Also turn on your bell notifications and do make sure you give this video a thumbs up because that helps my channel to grow immensely and I really appreciate when you do that for me. Also make sure you check the description of this video because there is always lots of helpful information down there and previous videos as well as the playlist for this series. I hope that y'all have a fantastic day and happy coloring. Bye!